Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Regain to Dicom video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with Diana, which is an x86 based processor based upon the AMD Zen microarchitecture. Now, you may scratch your head for a moment and say, well, what's happened? Has AMD's designs leaked out? Have uh, Chinese engineers managed to reverse engineer a Zen processor core or what's going on? Actually, no, this is part of a licensing agreement that AMD have reached with companies in China to actually produce these chips. And AMD will be receiving a fee for each chip sold. The company in question is known as Hygon and they are the fruit of AMD's x86 IP licensing agreements. AMD do not sell the final design to the silicon. However, the final chips are so close to that of, let's say, an Epic processor that you can only actually tell the difference because of vendor IDs and family serial numbers. It's incredibly easy to pour Epic code over to that of Diana. So there's not going to be that much difference for, let's say, a developer. In fact, to say there's not much difference is vastly overstating. There is essentially no difference between the chips. However, certain features like the secure virtual processor will not make an appearance in the Chinese derivatives. Now, think of it this way. For AMD, this was a much needed cash injection back in 2016. Back then, AMD received 293 million US dollars to help the company, which of course had been struggling for some time. For around six quarters straight, it had consistently posted negative revenue. In other words, it was losing money. And therefore, to get cash, it needed to license out some of its technologies. So AMD will actually reap money based on each of the processors which are sold as well. When you consider just how much of a demand there will be for x86 chips in the data center in China, you can see just how much potential cash is on the table for AMD. Once again, they will be getting a portion of the volume of the chips being sold. They will get some of that revenue. So as part of the licensing agreement, AMD started a joint venture in China and they have called this Taiyang Haiguan Advanced Technology Investment Co. Limited. That is that IC or T H A T I C. And they've agreed to license its x86 and SOC IPs for chip development. So it consists of AMD and both public and private Chinese companies, including the Chinese Academy of Sciences. And by the way, this is actually heavily influenced, of course, by the Chinese government. According to MyDrivers.com, that IC then established two companies through joint ventures, Huang Microelectronics and Chengdong Huang Integrated Circuits Design, also known as Haigong. AMD holds a 51% stake in HMC, where while Tianjin uh, Holdings owns 49%, and AMD owns 30% of Haigong, and Tianjin Holdings owns 70%. The first thing this does is it still allows our AMD to continue to license x86 technology from Intel and not break that and then use that license to sell chips in China. The second thing is it also bypasses any regional restrictions as well. You might recall that in 2015, the Obama administration actually blocked Intel from selling Xeon processors in China uh, for various reasons, which are slightly political and I don't really want to get into in this video but still the fact is that this is causing a lot of folks to raise their eyebrows because obviously with the trade war at the moment that's starting to escalate between China and America it's going to be interesting to see how all of this takes place it is critical however to remember that AMD actually started this deal before the trade war uh, was a thing once again this started back in 2016 However, if we keep this just purely on tech rather than the politics, if you were to look at it from AMD's point of view, it's going to be an awfully good cash cow. If you just look at the number of data centers which are going to be required in China over the next several years, up until let's say 2020 or 2025, it's going to be a monumental amount of chips which AMD will be providing, at least through this uh, other company. 
So that's going to be an awful lot of cash that AMD, of course, will most likely be needing. It has been doing a lot better financial, financially excuse me, of late, but that isn't to say that it's quite in the position that it probably should be. And it's a weird company to actually speak about AMD. I've said for a long time, especially back in 2016, that AMD was one of those companies where you scratch your head because on paper, they should be a company which are worth way more than what they actually were back then. Of course, that's because they did put out a couple of products which didn't do quite as well and they did make a couple of mistakes. But fortunately, uh, recently have made an awful lot of good decisions. And obviously the decision of Microsoft and Sony to utilize their chips in the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox consoles, which I believe was about 20% of AMD's total revenue, but that's from memory, so that might have actually been incorrect. Plus other things like the development on how successful Zen has been, which of course is also leading to a lot of success in the data center through Epic. They've certainly put a lot of uh, irons in the fire Assuming they can get their GPU division down, it's going to be interesting to see how the company grows. And it's also going to be interesting to see what type of, uh, well, negative reception they receive thanks to this latest news in China. And now we're going to start things out with Intel. After all, one piece of good CPU news deserves another. And Whiskey Lake. So Whiskey Lake is a refinement of Cable Lake, which is designed around the 15 watt power envelope, in other words, for mobile slash portable type of devices. And it is based on a Cable Lake uh, architecture, but heavily um, refined process. The Twitter user Tom Apisak actually um, linked these uh, processes himself, and they include the i7-8565U, which is a successor to the 8550U, and the i5 uh, 8265U, which is also a successor on the i5-8250U. So they are based on the 14NM++ node and is an evolution of the Cable Lake R architecture. Essentially, we are looking at very similar processes to their predecessors, but the key difference is slightly higher clock speeds. So you're looking at a couple of hundred megahertz over their predecessors. The i7-8565U is four cores, eight threads, and eight megabytes of level three, and once again, 15 watts, and has a base clock speed of 1.8 gigahertz, 4.5 gigahertz for boost. So that is actually a pretty large jump because while the base frequency is the same, we're looking at 500 megahertz compared, uh, advantage compared to its predecessor. The i5-8265U is four cores, eight threads, uh, but just comes with six megabytes of level three cache, but once again, a 15 watt package, uh, the same frequency. The same frequency gains, however, can be seen in turbo. We're looking at 500 megahertz jump. So that's 1.6 gigahertz for the base and a boost of 3.9 gigahertz. Both of these are using the UHD 620 with 1.1 gigahertz uh, clock speed on the GPU for the uh, i5, but the i7 runs at 1150 megahertz. So these two processors are nothing exactly amazing. Instead, it's a slight evolution of what we already have. So for those looking for a major upgrade or for hoping you're gonna get a major upgrade, sorry to disappoint you, but if you've not yet buy one of these devices, it's gonna be a slight tweak over what you could currently grab already. There is already a laptop which has these processors which has been listed, so they're no doubt gonna start appearing on retail shelves in the not too distant future. Sorry for the shorter video today, but uh, I have been hard at work benchmarking and doing a few bits and pieces for the finalization of a couple of reviews. Tomorrow will actually be a fun tech video, which is just going to be exploring performance with a very different take. You'll see what that's about tomorrow. But for now, uh, thanks very much for the support. Uh, have a great uh, weekend and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.